love me, Daddy, and you're going to take care of everything that concerns me. Amen? Amen. Amen. Point number two, persecutions are nothing compared to the glory revealed in and through us because of Jesus. I love this verse. I'm going to read it, verse 17 and 18 together, I think. And if we are his children, we are his heirs also, heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ, sharing his inheritance with him. Only we must share his suffering if we are to share his glory. But what of that? For I consider that the sufferings of this present time, this present life, are not worth being compared with the glory that is about to be revealed to us, in us, for us, and conferred on us. Now the word suffering in this verse, so you can completely understand what's being said here, is specifically persecutions. Okay? And the word glory is God's nature or his opinion. It's the manifestation of who he is and all that he has. Now, when I began to teach that it's all about Jesus, that it's not about what you do, it's all about Jesus, I didn't know of anybody else. Now, I'm sure there were other people teaching it, but I didn't know it, okay? And I began to get persecuted, People began to say evil things about me because people didn't, hadn't heard this message that you're righteous because of Jesus, that you're financially blessed just because of Jesus. No, you have to tithe and give and confess. That's what I've been hearing my whole life, right? And so I come along and I say, you're blessed because of Jesus. You've been made righteous, okay? Okay. All the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. And people, people didn't like it. And they began to say negative things about me. I got talked about from the pulpit. <laughs> and people have talked behind my back saying I was a heretic that I was teaching wrong. Why? Because I was lifting up Jesus. Isn't that sad? I was lifting up Jesus. I was saying it's not about what you do. It's about what Jesus did. And people were not liking it. And they were saying nasty things about me. I went to my father about this. And I said, Father, what do you say about this? They're saying all these evil things about me. And this verse came up in my heart so strong. And he said to me, Connie, the persecutions that you're receiving at this present time is nothing compared to the glory that's going to be revealed in you and through you and all around you, girl. And when I went to him and I said, it was like, bring it on! Bring it on! You want to say something bad about me? It ain't nothing compared to the glory that's going to be conferred in and through and among me upon the people who are going to hear the good news and are going to receive the truth that it's all about Jesus and their lives are going to be transformed. Woohoo! Not too long ago, I got an email from somebody that I forwarded to several people in this room. And it's, they said how disqualified I was. How, I mean, I'm, email about this long. You are so disqualified. You shouldn't be teaching the word. And I look at it, and I'm like, who's my daddy? <laughs> Who is my daddy? My daddy says I'm qualified. My daddy says I'm anointed. My daddy says, oh, thank you, Jesus. My daddy says that I'm anointed and qualified to preach the good news and to set the captives free. It doesn't matter what anybody says. It doesn't what matter what nasty note I get. Who's my daddy? And that has set me free. And so I'm telling you, and I'm warning you right now, you start thinking you're something because of Jesus. You start thinking you're wonderful and blessed and anointed and qualified because of Jesus. Those older brothers are not going to like it. 
Those ones that have been working hard their whole life and been faithful to the nth degree, they're not going to like it and they're not going to like you. And so when you hear them, it might be your family member (laughs) coming against you. It might be your child, your parent, your own spouse. But the persecutions that you receive because you stand for Jesus and what he did is nothing compared to the glory, the manifestation of who God is in your life, the manifestation of what he has, the effect you are going to have on the people around you, the life that you're going to bring to the people around you. See, when you were a slave to the law, guess what you did? You put everybody else enslaved to the law too. But now that you know, you wake up to righteousness, you're an heir, a daughter, a son of God, you're bringing life to everyone around you. You know why? Because you're telling them you're loved, you're blessed, you're an heir, your daddy loves you. You don't have to do anything else. Just be loved. Just live loved. Rest in him. And the Holy Spirit, like we've been learning, when you rest that you are a daughter, son of God, that you are an heir to everything that belongs to him, the fruit of peace, the fruit of joy, the fruit of love comes forth. That's the glory of God. So it's okay if somebody can come against you because you're a post on Facebook. When you look at it, when you look at them coming against you, go, woohoo! Bring it on! This is nothing compared to the glory. My father's good opinion of me that's going to be working in me, through me, and brought about all around me. Because let me tell you, there's going to be a whole lot more who are hungry for truth. There's going to be a whole lot more that are hungry for freedom. There's going to be a whole lot more who just want a perfect daddy that loves them instead of a a master who they're trying to serve, who they're trying to please. They want a daddy who approves of them, that loves them, that just gives them everything simply because they're his. This is the good news of the gospel. This is the good news that sets people free. The sufferings, the persecutions, the the negative words that come at us because we stand for truth. Jesus, Jesus suffered that way. He was persecuted. He was reviled, it says, said all kinds of evil against him because you know why? He said, I am the beloved son of God. And the religious people didn't like it because he stood for who he was, because he declared what the Father said about him, people around him didn't like it. And when you start declaring what the Father says about you, there's going to be some that don't like it, but that's okay, because his glory is going to manifest in your life, and his glory is going to manifest all around you. And those few people, that few persecutions that comes, not even going to compare. And I have witnessed this. I get letters, emails, All the time, people coming up to me about their lives being transformed and changed because of the good news. It's all about Jesus. You've been made righteous as a free gift. And every time I hear it, I'm telling you, it far outweighs those few. Far outweighs, just like the scripture says. It's not even compared how many people are being set free. Amen? Amen. Woo! Don't be afraid of what people think because you stand for truth. Okay? You're not a fearful slave. You're an heir of the Father's good opinion of you. And he's fully pleased with you because you put your faith in Jesus. All right. Verse 19, for even the whole creation, all nature waits expectantly and longs earnestly for God's sons to be made known, waits for the revealing and disclosing of their sonship. The whole earth is waiting 
waiting for us to wake up and realize who we are, that the glory of the Lord may manifest in this world. How's that going to happen? When we wake up, when we wake up to who we truly are, the glory of God is going to manifest more and more and more in this earth. Praise God. Romans 8, 20 through 25. For the creation nature was subjected to frailty, condemned to frustration, not because of some intentional fault on its part, but the will of him who subjected it, yet with the hope that nature creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and corruption and gain an entrance into the glorious freedom of God's children. We know that the whole creation has been moaning together in the pains of labor until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves too, who have enjoyed the first fruits of the Holy Spirit, a foretaste of the blissful things to come, grown inwardly as we wait for the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we have been saved. But hope, the object of which is seen, is not hope. For how can one hope? Wait a minute. But hope, the object of which is seen, is not hope. For how can one hope for what he already sees? But if we hope for what is still unseen by us, we wait for it with patience and composure. And this passage is talking about the full redemption of our bodies. The bodies that we're going to have for all eternity are heavenly bodies that don't decay, that don't die, that don't grow old. Our youth is renewed like the eagles. Thank you, Jesus. Right? Right? But the full redemption is going to come one day when we see Jesus face to face. Right? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus, for your full redemption of the earth and all of us. Thank you, Father. Come, Lord Jesus. That is the promise that this passage of Scripture is talking about that the earth will be redeemed completely from decay and corruption and our bodies will be redeemed completely and we will live forever in health and prosperity. Can we have that now? Yes, we can. Will we have it forever? Yes, we will. We are heirs to health. Amen? We're heirs to our youth being renewed like the eagles. We're heirs to prosperity and peace and joy and love. We're heirs of the goodness of God. We're heirs. Amen? Amen. Amen. And all things work together for our good. Romans 8, 26 through 28. So too the Holy Spirit comes to our aid and bears us up in our weakness. For we do not know what prayer to offer, nor how to offer it worthily as we ought. But the Spirit himself goes to meet our supplication and pleads in our behalf with unspeakable yearnings and groanings too deep for utterance. And he who searches the hearts of men knows what is in the mind of the Holy Spirit, what his intent is. Because the Spirit intercedes and pleads before God in behalf of the saints according to and in harmony with God's will. Verse 28, we are assured and know that God, being a partner in their labor, all things work together and are fitting into a plan for good to and for those who love God and are called according to his design and purpose. Who's your daddy? (laughs) The one who works out everything for our good. To know that your daddy loves you and that in your weakness, when you feel weak, the spirit of God prays through you, prays the perfect will of God into your life. And it's working out everything for your good. I love this promise. It brings me such peace. In in many situations of my life, I hear the father say to me, Connie, this is going to work out for your good. You know, I've told you a lot that when I feel, you know, something, a challenge is set before me or a trial or a negative situation, I always say, Daddy, Father, what do you say? What do you say about this? And a lot of times I'll hear him say, Connie, this is going to work out for your good. You don't have to worry about it. And I'm going to share with you a couple of instances, big instances for that in my life. Some of you have heard this story and some of you haven't, so I'm going to share it again. But a couple of years ago, um, because of Jesus Ministries, was in some office space. 
and it was July of 2009, or it was June of 2009, and there were a lot of people moving out of the office space around me, and so I thought that I was going to be able to get a really good deal on my next, my, you know, whatever lease was coming back up, and I thought, I'm going to get a really good deal because all these people are moving out, and they need me to stay. But what happened was, a couple weeks later, I got this note or this letter that said they were going to raise my rent by about 20%. And I said to my father, I said, Father, what do you say about this? What, what is this? And, he, and I heard him say, Connie, I'm going to work this out for your good. Trust me. This was the end of June of 2009. And so I said, okay, Lord, I don't know what's going to happen here, but I'm going to trust you because you love me and you're going to work this out for my good. I put my 30-day notice in and I went off to visit my family for two weeks had to be out of this office space by July the 31st. I was gone until the 15th of July. I come back from my trip with my family. Went to bed, got out the next morning with a smile on my face because I was going out driving with my daddy and he was going to show me where I was going to go and where we, we were going to move to. So I started driving around and I was just talking to the Lord and I was just saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for leading me and guiding me. I'm led by your spirit. You caused my thoughts to be agreeable to your will. You love me, Father, and you're going to show me where you would have us go. So I went and I looked at a couple of rental place, office spaces and, and I looked at them, but it just wasn't, no, this isn't it. And all of a sudden my heart started leaning towards purchasing property to have our Because of Jesus office space. Remember, I have two weeks to get out, okay? So I got a realtor. She started taking me around looking at properties. We looked at a couple of them for one week and didn't see anything we liked. And then there was this one that came up. Oh, actually, it was a Sunday night. We were having our Sunday night group. And I was telling everybody at Sunday night, I said, you know what? I really feel like the Lord is leading us to purchase some space for the ministry, and my friend Shannon said, and what day do we have to be out of there? And I said, Friday. And this was Sunday. And she looked at me like, she didn't say anything. She was real good about not saying like, that's impossible, Connie. She didn't say that. But you could see it all over her face. And she just kind of looked at me like, okay. <laughs> do you realize you have to have at least 30 days to close on a property? And that's if you have cash? And I'm like, all I know is that's the way the Father's leading me, and we're going to move into something that we're going to purchase. And I'm like, okay. So the next day, I went and looked at another property, and then I had everybody come look at it, and the, the witness was there. It's like, this is it. This is the place. This is where our ministry offices are. So anyhow, the negotiation, okay, I have to be out by Friday. It's Tuesday. I'm going to purchase this property. Don't know how. But it's going to happen because my dad, who's my daddy? <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? He said he'd work it out for my good. He said he had something better. And so anyhow, after the negotiations of this property, this is how it worked out for my good. I got to move all my stuff in on Friday. Got to stay there for six months for free. <laughs> Closed on the property, not in 30 days, in six months. Got to stay there for free. Got twice the amount of space for half the amount of payment. That's how my daddy worked it out for my good. Isn't that awesome? That is, that is how he wants us to live. Not a fearful slave. What am I going to do? How am I going to fix this? This is impossible. No. Who's my daddy? The one that said he's going to work it out for my good. The one who, set, who has all the resources necessary. The one who guides me, leads me, gives me favor. That was tremendous favor I had with those people that were selling this property. They let me and trusted me for six months to be in their property, and I paid zero For we can be very sure that God will work all things together for our good. Amen? 
And I'm going to share one more with you. I know I shared this one with you too, but it's another one of my favorites. In 2009, the same year, me and s- several of my friends went on a girls' getaway cruise. And on our way there, all it seemed like all hell broke loose. I mean, there were things going on with the boat. You know, it, we just were having challenge after challenge, and I started hearing all of these talkings about what was going on. And, and again, who's my daddy? See, I'm not a fearful slave. You're not a fearful slave. When fear starts coming at you, who's your daddy? Turn, Father, what do you say? And I heard him say, Connie, this is going to work out for your good. See, the interesting thing about it is the Holy Spirit has empowered me to simply believe that. I don't, there's no question, and, and it's not anything special about me. You have the same daddy. It's just turning to him, remembering who you are, that you're joint heirs with Jesus. All the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ. When you start focusing on Jesus, faith comes. He empowers you to believe. Our part is just to turn to him. I know you love me, Lord. I'm going to work this out for your good. I can promise you. When I heard that, I'm like, oh, my goodness. And I'm telling you, there was all of this. It could have caused me much turmoil. It could have caused me much fear. It could have made me feel like just going home. The place we were going to go on our cruise was canceled. Like we didn't get to go to the island that we had paid for for a whole year to go to because of the problems that this boat was having. And I was just like, you know what? And I started telling everybody around me, this is going to work out for our good. I am going to live in peace because I'm not a fearful slave. I'm a son of God, and this is going to work out for our good. So we go. I loved it. I'm telling you what, not not everybody around me loved it, but I loved it. You know why I loved it? Because I'm not a fearful slave. My daddy loves me, and he was working out something really good for me. So anyhow, we got done with our cruise. We went home from our cruise. And a few weeks later, a couple weeks later, I'm not really sure how long, we got this letter in the mail that said, because of our difficulties that we had with our cruise, they were going to give us a free cruise along with our spouses. So me, my spouse, guess what? Me, my husband, my daughter-in-law, my son, All of my friends and their husbands got to go on another cruise three months later for free. I think it worked out for our good. Who's your daddy? daddy? (laughs) See, you don't have, it's so wonderful, you know, and he will lead you and he will guide you and he will bless you and he will surround you with favor because you're a joint heir to every one of his blessings. You don't have to live like a, fearful, anxious, worried slave. You've not been given the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power and of love and a sound, well-balanced mind. How do you live in that? Who's your daddy? Father, daddy, you love me. What do you say? What do you say? What is it you have? That belongs to me. What is it? Who is it that you are that I am? The Spirit Himself testifies with our spirit, confirming that we are children of the Most High God, heirs to everything that belongs to Him. We have His nature, we have His promise, we have His blessing. We have his love. We have his approval, his acceptance, his health, his wealth, his wisdom, his guidance, his power, his strength. For everything the Father has belongs to us because we are children of the King. Because of Jesus. So awake to righteousness. You're no longer a fearful slave. You're a child of God, heir to all of his promises. No matter how many promises God has made, they are yes and amen to those who are in Christ Jesus. Awake to righteousness. You are qualified, innocent, 
forgiven, accepted, approved, and loved. Join Connie Witter as she takes you on a grace-filled journey through the book of Romans and discover what being righteous in Jesus truly means. Get your personal copy of Awake to Righteousness, also available as a group Bible study package. Call 918-994-6500 or visit ConnieWitter.com to order or download your copy today. Because of Jesus Ministries introduces our first children's storybook, Are You a Chicken Head? by Connie Witter. This fun little book asks the big life question, what's true about you? Mommy, that girl called me a chicken head. Is that true, Victoria? Are you a chicken head? What does Jesus say about you? For many years, I have shared this true story to encourage others to believe what Jesus says about them. I pray this book will inspire parents, grandparents, and children alike to confidently respond. I believe what Jesus says about me. Order this delightful book today. Call 918-994-6500 or go online at becauseofjesus.com where Bible studies are always in the light of Jesus. Hi, I'm Connie Witter, and I want to thank the partners of Because of Jesus Ministries for making it possible to bring this TV broadcast to your local station. It is my heart's desire to see people set free from religious rules and laws that tell them they have to do something to be approved and blessed by God. The truth is Jesus came and made us righteous and good and qualified for all of God's blessings as a gift of His grace. It is time that the world knows the true heart of our Father and His goodness and love and grace toward them in Jesus. I invite you to help us reach the world with this good news. You can become a partner today by visiting us online at ConnieWitter.com or you can give by your phone through text to give. Text the word GIVE to 918-218-2023. Together, we will change the world with the gospel of grace. Because of Jesus Ministries is your resource for grace-filled, Jesus-focused Bible studies and curriculum for all ages. Adult Bible studies, books, devotionals for girls and teens, DVDs, CDs, and MP3s. We offer group Bible study packages as well. Connect with us and check out our many free resources online at ConnieWitter.com, where Bible studies are always in the light of Jesus.